welcome back to my channel. My name is Evelyn and I won Camp NaNoWriMo. What? So that's what this video is all about. It is now mid-May, but back in April I wrote approximately 300 words a day. My goal was 9,000 words by the end of the month and I actually wrote 9,104. I tried to vlog my experience except turns out a writing vlog is even less interesting than a reading vlog, at least in my opinion. So all I have are kind of a weird jumble of clips that don't quite make sense together. So I thought I would come in and explain some things. Speaking of explaining things, I feel the need to explain my beautiful background, my throne of owl crate boxes here. I am between bookshelves. This wall is where I normally film, but I normally have my bookcases behind me. They are out of this room, but their replacements are on back order. So <laughs> for now, this is what we get. I actually am working on a video chronicling my switch over from my old bookcases to the new ones, so look forward to that. If you like bookshelf organizational videos, that'll be coming your way hopefully before the summer is over. So for those of you who are unaware, NaNoWriMo stands for National Novel Writing Month. It's an event that takes place every November where writers are encouraged to write 50,000 words slash the first draft of a novel. And then twice a year, in April and in July, the same people run what's called Camp NaNoWriMo. It's a much more relaxed sort of thing. A lot of people use it to edit the project that they started in November. I used it this year to continue the project. So at the beginning of the year, in 2020, I started out super optimistic. <sighs> and one of my goals was to write 300 words a day. Now, I quickly realized that that is not necessarily a realistic goal while one is in school, and it is definitely, definitely not a super realistic goal while one is trying to pick up the pieces of their life that was blown apart by a worldwide pandemic. Plus, I'm not the most disciplined writer. That's why I set this goal for myself. Uh, my general goal in life is to become a published author and be able to make a living by publishing Kidlet. And if I want to do that, I have to become a more disciplined writer. And so right now my goal is 300 words a day still. I want to be able to up that goal maybe set myself a time or something, but I feel like I need to, if I'm going to make writing my full-time job, be able to get way more than 300 words done in a day. But right now, because I am splitting writing and school during the school year, I thought 300 words would be a nice little easy thing. And on a lot of days it is, but on a lot of days it can be very difficult. I'll go ahead and put in the first couple days worth of clips right now so you can see kind of where my head was at when I started this month. Hey y'all! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Evelyn. Today is April 1st, 2020, and I have just decided that I'm going to join Camp NaNoWriMo. Because my life recently blew up but because of the coronavirus, I have not been writing. So to get myself back on track, I am trying to write 300 words a day for the rest of April, which means by the end of April, I will have written 9,000 words or more. Here is my progress page right now. I am here at zero words and I need to be here at 300 words to stay on my path to success.
so because I'm a super duper professional writer human, I have officially put my 300 words off today until 11.41. I've got 19 minutes to- oh, 11.42, I got 18 minutes to write my 300 words before midnight. Look at those 668 words. Ha ha ha. I'm just kind of dumping about the main character's two love interests. They're not actually cohesive paragraphs or plot or anything, but I'll be able to grab them and stick them in where I need them later. So, yeah. I say two love interests. I feel the need to make sure that you know that this isn't really a love triangle. By the time she likes the second person, she's kind of gotten over her feelings for the first person, but her feelings for the first person are what motivate the quest. This is a quest. I'll spend some time tomorrow explaining what my work in progress is about, so we'll just go ahead and cut to that. Hello, it is I, Talking Head Evelyn. And that makes here, because she wanted to come in my room. And now she regrets that decision. Don't you regret that decision? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> the working title of this book, which is not at all the actual title, whatever it's going to be, it's just something that I thought I would hashtag, but then I don't ever tweet about it, but it's Queer Quest. My main character is bisexual and she goes on a quest. So. I'm going to do a really quick, really vague rundown of the main characters and kind of the most basic sketch of the plot that I can give you. I'm trusting y'all not to steal it from me, but I want to be able to talk about it more on the channel. And so, yeah, I just got to figure out like how much do I want to give away? And I did no preparation for this, so I have been very into traditional, like, fairy tale style storytelling. Dealing with dragons, sorcery of thorns, Howl's Moving Castle. They all have this element of, like, traditional fairy tale to them. I have always been the kind of person who really loves that sort of, like, magical storytelling. When I was a kid, I really loved the Barbie movies, like Barbie Princess and the Pauper, Twelve Dancing Princesses, but my absolute favorite for a while was Barbie and the Magic of the Pegasus, and I had forgotten that this movie existed, but then like somebody had tweeted about it and I saw that. I was like, oh my gosh, and I was just gripped with this need to watch Barbie and the Magic of the Pegasus. So I found it like illegally uploaded on YouTube and I watched it. And even though I'm like older now and I realize that there are parts of the story that make absolutely no sense and like parts that are really cringy, right? It still made me really excited watching that. And I was like, wow, I want to write something that makes me as excited as this Barbie movie does. And I want I want to write something that would make other girls as excited. And I want to have a character who is special in the ways that I wanted to be when I was younger and also is, is special in the ways that I wish that I'd seen now looking back. I had written this very short piece where I had described the setting of a garden and Something about that just really spoke to me and so I was picturing this girl in a garden and when I was young me and my best friend would play Barbies. Every Barbie that we had would have a special power and I always liked to give my Barbies like plant powers and so I was like I'm going to explore this character who has the ability to manipulate plants and then that kind of turned into talk to plants and now my main character Cora actually speaks the language of the trees. It's not that she is magical, it's that she's bilingual. 
and also bisexual. She's a multifaceted human being. With that concept in mind, things started kind of falling more into place. I decided that I wanted it to be a quest because some of my favorite books as a child were all quests. Uh, searching for dragons, the Percy Jackson books all center around quests, that Barbie movie was a quest, and it just felt right to have this character who I imagined being very sheltered and living in this in this garden world, um, having to go out and um, explore and expand as a human being. Some of the characters that I've already written a lot of scenes for are actually trees. Cora has four uh, tree friends that she uh, has grown up with. They they are like her, um, almost her annoying like aunts and uncles. Cora is actually the daughter of a palace gardener and so these trees are in the big garden at the center of the palace and uh, at a young age her mother died around the same time that the king died and she ended up bonding with the princess, uh, whose name is Adeline. Cora has been in love with her for quite a long time, but Adeline, of course, has to marry a suitable man so that she can take over the throne and produce heirs and become the queen. Once suitors start showing up at the palace, that becomes kind of an issue. There is a quest uh, that is part of the book. I don't want to give too much away in regards to how this quest comes about. Cora and her traveling companion, who she does not quite get along with that well, um, have to go on this journey together. They are going to be traveling through an enchanted forest, through different towns. They'll encounter fairies and, and dragons and trolls and all sorts of just the, like, magical creatures that populated these worlds that I loved as a child. I'm so excited, it's so fun to get to play with them and come up with fun ways to twist around these tropes that I've had stored in my brain since childhood. It's a lot to try to shove into one story, but it, it all seems to be coming together pretty well so far. I hope that a, I hope that I haven't given too much away. B, I hope that just this little snippet of thing has piqued your interest maybe a little bit. All right, so I will throw you back to vlogging Evelyn who should be working on her 300 words right about now. On today's episode of cutting it really fucking close, um, it's 11.53. I got distracted by talking with a friend, and I have seven minutes to write 300 words, or at least put in that I wrote 300 words on NaNoWriMo so that I don't get behind again. <laughs> Update, I have written 171 words. Are they great words? No, but are they on the page? Yes. Can I fix them later? Yes. It is 11.58. I shouldn't be filming this. Ah! Look at that, bitch. 334 words. 1201. <laughs> we did it, baby! Ha <laughs> ha! Which means I get to add 34 extra words to the word count that I already changed because I was paranoid. <laughs> counting it for April 5th, which is today, so I'm not on track for today, but I will be once I write 300 more, basically. Whatever, 300 minus two, two, one. Oh my gosh, okay. I can't do math. I'm an English major, okay? <laughs> That's why I have to stick to this, because if I don't stick to this, then I get confused and, and I end up down in this bad area and we want to be up in this good area at the end of the month. So, yes. All right. I will see you tomorrow. 
like I said in some of the previous clips, I was working on my current work in progress, which is a young adult fantasy novel set in a fairy tale inspired world, and the main character is a bisexual girl, although her main love interest is a man, and that was something that I have been struggling with throughout the process, but that doubt about it hit me kind of hard over the month because I love my two main characters. Their names are Cora and Lex and they're great together. But I, as someone who wants to be writing for young queer girls specifically, I kind of fell victim to like the self-doubting thoughts of like what it, like why am I writing her as bisexual if she's just going to end up with a guy and like obviously she has super super strong feelings for a girl at the very beginning of the book but then like the guy is her only viable option and I like don't want that to be problematic and I know it's not but there are a lot of very loud biphobic voices that exist in the world and so I often feel like Perhaps I'm not doing the best job of representing the community that I care about. I talk about this stuff kind of a lot on Two-Headed Writer, which is the writing channel that I do with my father. We talk about writing every week, and if you're interested in learning more about my writing journey, then you should totally go check that out. I will have the link in the description down below, and you should go subscribe. We put out a video most every week. Um, and you can learn about the book that we're writing together as well as the stuff that he's writing on his own. He's a really cool children's just creator in general and so um, I think we have fun. I think they're interesting videos. We were doing them via Zoom before the world needed Zoom. Now we don't need Zoom because we're in the same household again, but <laughs> yeah. Um, I am going to keep making writing videos on this channel, but they will definitely be less frequent than they are over there, but I will be talking more specifically about some of my work. So you might as well just go subscribe, like just do it. Okay, moment of self-promotion over. It's 11.29 at night, um, Tuesday, April the 7th. I just leapt out of the shower <laughs> because I realized that I hadn't written my 300 words. <laughs> so let's get that done real quick. Words ahead. That's awesome. I haven't had time to go back and read the things that I wrote back in November during NaNoWriMo, which means I don't feel comfortable writing in scenes right now, and so I'm actually writing from the point of view of my main character just every day about a certain topic, a few paragraphs about that topic. So today it was about the trees and the language of the trees um, and her feelings about the specific trees that she has known her entire life who are actually like characters in the first part of the book. When I actually get to the part in the book, in the scenes where she's thinking about these things and this information naturally should go into those bits, um, I'll be able to find these paragraphs that I already wrote and then adapt them to fit into the narrative of the story. So that is how I'm making progress even though I'm not actually writing full-on scenes. Well, on the one hand, I successfully missed updating my word count on the 8th 
But on the other hand, it's officially past midnight, which means it's my birthday. <laughs> and I started out reading about the Beatles. What else? Um, you want to see if we can type 600 words real fast? I think I do. Okay, so I have written some of you to check. Ugh, 152 words. I'm trying to write 600. If I don't have 600 by 1 in the morning, it is now 12.30, then I will stop. But I want to get this done so that I have minimal things to work on in the morning morning so I can do birthday things. <laughs> anyway, back to the typity type. Okay, so if you look here, I had dipped a little bit below the path to success, but I am now stay a little bit above this line for safety reasons, but I now have 3,022 words out of 9,000 written for the month of April. And that makes, in total, 24,233 words in total for the entire manuscript. I have several writing things to do. First, we are reading the most recent draft of Inklings of Ethermore, which is the middle grade portal fantasy that my father and I have been writing together for years and years and years. He just finished doing his edit, so I am going through and reading the entire thing and leaving some notes. Of course, I'm doing my 300 words a day at some point. I'm also looking back at a short story I wrote earlier this semester because I'm submitting that uh, to be considered for this course next semester that's a advanced fiction writing seminar kind of thing and so I have to submit a short story and I want to look back at this because I haven't touched it in a couple months and kind of see where it's at and whether or not there are some edits that can be made. Um, I did submit this story to a couple magazines and did not get accepted into anything. I got some other works accepted and so obviously I should take a second look at it because I thought it was really good but there's something about it that somebody didn't respond to so I'm just gonna double check make sure that I still like it. <laughs> Last but not least I am editing tomorrow's two-headed writer video and then I should also probably start working on I've got a couple school assignments due next Friday and I should take the time this weekend to draft those out so that I don't have to be drafting and editing them all in one week although the first one is just a rough draft so that won't be a problem uh, as much as the like as it is like do do on Friday. <laughs> okay, anyway, that's my update and I'm gonna get to work on that. <sighs> okay. <laughs> One, two, three. We get <laughs> it. One, two, three. We finished draft eight of Inklings of Ethermore! So, I'm reading the first chapter after our characters enter Ethermore, which is the, the world in our portal fantasy. And I love this chapter so much. I'm reading it, I'm like, this is a good book right? Um, which, which is exciting, you know, like, I wrote parts of this, I've, I've helped create this, but, um, it's still exciting when you're, when you're reading it and you haven't really seen it in a while and you're still in love with it. That's, 
That's a really good feeling. Also, this just in, the two of us are goofy. <laughs> Check please is really doing it to me, oh my god. I wasn't expecting that. Oh my god. I haven't shipped something so hard in a very long time. And I've only been reading this for like a day, like two hours. Oh, and of course that's the last fucking thing. I don't think that they have book two on their overdrive. Oh, okay, we're gonna have to come up with a way to read book two. Is book two even out? I have so many questions, wait a second, hold on. Oh my gosh, on April 7th, 2020, book two of Check Please came out in bookstores. So like literally like four days ago. <laughs> okay, so obviously adding these to my list of books that I'm about to purchase with my birthday money because holy shit ah <laughs> uh, this is really good I never thought I would care about sports but I care about this hockey team right so as you can see I definitely struggled with actually writing the 300 words every day there were so many days where I forgot until like 11.30 or later at night. Oh shoot, I gotta go write this. And that's because I was trying to balance online class and also writing, which was all happening on my laptop. And I find it really easy to get distracted when I'm working on my laptop. And also, I was just having to do all of my work on my laptop and I got really tired of it. So I actually, I read so much in April uh, to procrastinate doing things like school and writing my 300 words. And so my Goodreads is thriving, but my um, everything else kind of was, was a struggle to do. Um, so, which is not a bad thing. I get paid to write certain reviews and I, you know, reading is part of writing and I do this channel and I need to be able to keep on track of my reading but I the, the balance was not you want to have a nice happy medium and I was all over the place so that's something I am still working on and I know that's something that a lot of like full-time like published authors also struggle with is finding that writing versus other creative or relaxing pursuits balance and so I try not to make myself feel bad about it but at the same time I know that I need to once again work on being a more disciplined writer that's what I've learned in the past month okay so it is now what Thursday the 16th and I no Thursday the 15th no 16th what is today? It's the 16th, Thursday the 16th, and I just now put in, it's a little past midnight, I just now put in 600 words for the past two days, um, and I am contemplating adding my male leads point of view to the outline because I think there are some things that could be interesting when shown from his point of view and it might be fun to have like some of the um, kind of there's details that he knows that Cora doesn't know and getting those from his point of view the audience is going to have some like dramatic irony and that would be really fun so I was brainstorming ways that I could include him and I ended up filling in one of the holes near the beginning of the quest and so I'm actually feeling pretty good about myself. I'm gonna have to write 300 more words at some point um, when I wake up in the morning morning. So I have written 300 words today. Yay, so I'm back on track. And also they were 300 words from Alexander's 
point of view, which is uh, kind of new and unusual for me because I just decided to try to integrate his point of view in a version of my outline to see whether or not it's even feasible to have him as a dual point of view novel, right? And I actually really liked writing that short snippet, admittedly, from his point of view because he's just a lot like more cynical than Korra and so um, that's fun. <laughs> I get to embrace my cynical side, and also I get to describe all of the times that she looks at him like she wants to murder him, which is like lots of times. And she's so small, but she could do it. I think she could. If she couldn't, then a tree would. Don't know if I've mentioned it, I'm trying to finish this in time for November, so that in November I can do NaNoWriMo with my contemporary project that I'm currently kind of slowly outlining and so far all of my large chunks of progress have been through NaNoWriMo events because right now I'm doing camp NaNoWriMo uh, because I think I am more accountable when I plug numbers into a thing and see my little thing go up and I should honestly like figure out how to do that on my own and not just rely on NaNoWriMo every few months to kick my butt into gear. I should be able to kick my own butt. Okay. <laughs> don't know what we're playing, but I don't know. She's got the video going. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is, um, oh, look at that. I have not written 300 words today, but I cannot even fathom writing more words today, so. <laughs> um, oops, we'll do that tomorrow. thousand words written this month and I don't really have that much homework this week on. I just have to read part of Macbeth and whatever I have to read for foundations and that's it. So I've decided that I'm going to really crack down on this fucking book this week. Weekend. Week two but weekend. And this also coincides with the fact that Y'all Stay at Home, the online version of Y'all Fest, starts today, tracking my progress. I am behind. I have 6,824 words in order to be on my path to success, I need to have 705,000. Nope. Other way around, 7,500 words, which means I need 363 words written today. Not that bad. I can get that done. I write like 1,300 words in one day and then haven't touched it. My first pale thing starts in 13 minutes, so I'm gonna see if I can out 360 something words in 13 minutes and I don't know what to write about so I'm gonna actually go find a prompt okay so my friend Amanda from Iowa has been using this list of prompts to write poetry all month because it is poetry writing month but <laughs> I'm not a poet I'm gonna use the escape roll prompt for today the 25th which is Extinction. My story's all about 
trees and plants and wildlife, or at least that's kind of like a, a theme, a motif, perhaps, that, that runs through it, and so they're actually, part of their quest, they're searching for a plant, a specific plant, and that plant is rare, possibly because it's going extinct. So they have traveled all the way up into the mountains, met Cora's mother's family to ask them for help, and they've been instructed to go find this plant. And I wanted to put a volcano in just a little bit, just like volcanoes are fun. But also like then I have to like Google how volcanoes look and work, I guess. Oh, let's see, what is a uh, inactive Oh see, doesn't this look fucking so cool? Like the inside of a dormant volcano and like plant life has grown into it. I think I want something like that to be my setting for this part of the book. However, there needs to be some sort of challenge. Um, or else anyone could go get it, you know? What would be guarding a plant? Is the plant, is the plant alive? Okay. So we're now googling types of plants on volcanoes. I'm thinking maybe they're looking for a flower or a seed from some sort of tree. This tree would maybe have anger issues or just like doesn't trust humans. Of course our main character speaks tree and so would be able to talk to it, but maybe this tree is like very old and ancient and therefore like doesn't necessarily speak the exact same dialect of the, the tree language. And because it's so old and ancient, I have the trees being able to kind of move when they want to, so it would be able to potentially attack them. Maybe there's an island like beyond the mountains with a volcano. Maybe it's just part of the mountains. I need to look up volcano foliage and I need to look up mountain foliage and um, figure out where those overlap. Okay, it is 3.01 a.m. on April 30th. Cameron and Connor are here. Well, Cameron is gone. There's Cameron. Hi. I have just written over a thousand words total, but specifically 525 words in this last mini sprint, which means that when I type that in here, I have now written 9,104 words in the month of April. <laughs> yeah, so like I said, I found it very challenging to get this writing done because like other life things kept popping up and it was like, oh well, like I can always write tomorrow. I can always write tomorrow because there's not a hard deadline for me right now in terms of my writing goals. I'm not agented, I don't have a publishing contract, like this is something that I love and something that I want to do, but right now there are other things that I could be doing that actually would make me money or actually like I need this grade, And right? Like I don't feel bad about prioritizing school and my job over this sometimes, but I feel like I use that as an excuse a lot where I could be more efficient in doing all of those things, right? And so <laughs> I need to get back into scheduling, uh, which is weird because time doesn't exist right now. And uh, this is going to be the weirdest summer of my life because for the first time ever my dad is not going out on tour. Tour. My father is a children's musician during the summer and he goes to a lot of libraries and does performances, but it's not safe to do that right now because of the virus. So we are doing some virtual performances, but other than that we are not 
piling into the car and driving around and doing all the sorts of things that we usually do. So that means I'm going to be home all summer for like the first time. I was already home a lot more than my friends because they would all go to camps and stuff. But still, like, I'm not going to be spending half of my summer in the car, which means I can have a daily schedule, which is exciting. So that is my goal for the rest of May into June is to come up with a daily writing slash video editing slash reading slash whatever schedule that works well for me to be the most productive that I can be. So yeah, I did win Camp NaNoWriMo and I'm very proud of that and I did celebrate that and I am 9,000 words closer to getting my book drafted and complete but also I learned that I have a lot more to work on. So you know the intro to Avatar The Last Airbender where he's like, although his airbending skills are great, he has a lot to learn before he's ready to save anyone. But I believe Aang can save the world. Do, 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 do. That's me right now, except it's like, although she wrote 9,000 words, she's got a lot more words to write and a lot more skills to learn before she can get a book published. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Can you tell that I was excited about Avatar The Last Airbender being on Netflix? Because I was. So like I said, I want to start talking more about my writing on this channel because I do want to become an author and it's great to be talking about books all the time and I love promoting books, but I also should try to start promoting myself, maybe? Hmm? If you're interested in that sort of writing content, you have questions about uh, anything that I talked about in this super disjointed video, then uh, comment down below and I will try to answer them in the next video. That's right, I said next video. I'm actually going to immediately start filming a May slash June writing video. I don't know exactly what the format of these is going to end up being because the vlog thing didn't totally work, but it also didn't not work. So again, let me know if you have a preference, vlog or sit down. This video is kind of half and half. Uh, we'll figure it out together. So if you want to see what all those random paragraphs I was writing over April ended up leading me to, then you should totally subscribe to my channel so you can watch the next video in this series. All right, that is all that I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Evelyn. I make new videos every magical Monday and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.